So I left the Baptist Church about quarter to five this morning, walked down to the convenience store and had bacon eggs, hash browns, pancakes. <clears throat> so I should be good for the day. <clears throat> and now I've got about all oh, five more miles before I get off the reservation. But boy, I've really enjoyed my stay here. I could spend the winter down here. Nice, friendly people, beautiful town. I'm glad I stopped at the Baptist Church. I wasn't going to, but that was a great experience. Uh, Pastor Payne, interesting guy. <clears throat> Only Baptist preacher I've ever met that's a alligator wrestler. So he was showing pictures of his younger self wrestling alligators and so he's from Oklahoma, but he and his wife have been down here about 40 years. And they started over in Hollywood, Florida, uh, on the reservation. And he got to know the alligator wrestler and uh, learned how to do it. So whenever that guy wanted a day off, Pastor Payne would go over there and wrestle alligators for tourists. <laughs> and uh, he had... Uh, a lot of pictures of Burmese python on the church property there where we camped and I think that freaked out some people they slept inside <laughs> but I got up this morning and one tent was missing and I thought you know I went to bed early but I never heard him and he must have been thinking about that snake and went indoors <laughs> So this is a nice walk. I mean, it's a road walk, but a little canal here. And uh, might even see some wildlife this morning. Who knows? Anyway, the other story I want to tell you is Pastor Bain was telling me, because I remember years ago being down here and seeing on nightly news back when Tom Brokaw was the um, anchor man. There was a funny, the media picked up on this funny story. The Seminole tribe was looking for a new alligator wrestler. And so they ran a job description and see if anybody would apply. <laughs> and they hadn't found one yet when the NBC crew showed up. So James Billy, who was the chief at the time, he was going to show them how to wrestle alligators. And it, I thought, I remember seeing it on TV I thought it took a few fingers off of him, but it just got one. And so when he got to probably Miami to save the finger, they got the finger back. Uh, a kid had been, I guess, run over by one of these beach cleaners and all the doctors were working on him. So Chief James Billy just said, just put it in a jar and give it to me. So <laughs> for the rest of his life, he had it sitting on his desk, and when somebody would make him mad, he'd just give him the finger. <laughs> Prized me most. There were probably six, seven people at the church grounds last night, and uh, everybody seemed to have a different perspective of the swamp. Uh, some actually went in and came back out, didn't go through. Some said, you know, one and done, I'm never doing that again. Uh, I thought it was great, and I would definitely do it again, will do it again. Um, and Silver Bullet, who is a really good, strong hiker, lots of experience, and, you know, she's pretty short, and just reading different posts kind of freaked her out a little bit because people were saying how deep it was, and, you know, she found out that that wasn't the case. So you can read too much into these things and, you know, pack other people's fears uh, other than your own. And so I would say it's a cakewalk through there. It just takes time. Enjoy it. Uh, I, I just rather hike alone. So I stayed ahead of the herd because, you know, when you're walking, water's crystal clear in there. But once you go through it and stir up that mud, if somebody's ahead of you, you're not walking point, you're just gonna see mud in the water. So 
Um, I would prefer to be ahead of the herd. That's kind of why I didn't go to kickoff. And, you know, it's not like there aren't things in there that are dangerous, but read the posts. Anybody die going through there? I don't think so. And, uh, you know, I finally saw a panther, but I haven't seen a python yet. I'm still looking. And I don't blame people for going in the church last night. I mean, you know, the pictures of the, the two pythons he showed me were probably 12 footers. You know, that's well over 100 pounds of snake and they're really kind of thick in the middle. And it, in that setting, they're extremely dangerous because I'll bet they try to get you to eat fruit. How'd that work out for Adam and Eve? You know what I'm saying? So I was prepared. I thought they asked me, going, no, I'm good. I'm going to get me a breakfast sandwich at the convenience store. <laughs> Another little tip that might be helpful to people that are thinking of doing the Florida Trail and starting in the Big Cypress is, and I'm not sure if this is a good idea or not, but you know, the first thing I do when I buy a set of poles is throw all the accessories away, the protective tips, baskets, everything. And, you know, those snow baskets on there might keep your poles from going so deep in the mud. But that's pretty soft, as I call it, sucky mud. So maybe you'd check with somebody that you know, like Twig, Leah, some of the trail angels and maintenance volunteers in there who really know the swamp. And I can't remember if, I don't think Leah had baskets, but maybe she did, I didn't look. Um, I could check some of my old video, but you know, maybe the baskets just get into that mud and they're harder to get your pole out. I don't know. Uh, if it would stop your pole from going deep into the mud, that'd be great, but could be more of a curse than a blessing. So once you leave the reservation, which is another probably mile or so for me, head north, you're kind of kind of out of Burmese python usual territory, so I'm probably not gonna see one unless he crosses this road in the near future. I mean, not that they're not going further north, but you know, if you're gonna see one, the last 50 miles is probably the place to be looking. And things are changing. I just saw a caracara. So that's a pretty unique looking bird you see here. Uh, a lot of white on the tail, white on the feathers, but they've got a real unique head and comb. I'll try and get a picture of one. There were two sitting on the fence, but as soon as I started approaching, they took off. And I'll see those at least up through the Kissimmee Prairie, so I'll get a picture of one. Okay, I've just come off the reservation, 1030, going up on the levee and my first water cache. So I'm going to hydrate up real good here and take a liter. And start hiking. So thank you Seminole Reservation. I had a great trip through there. Um, one tribe that never signed a treaty, my kind of people. <laughs> and I think Osceola gets all the credit, but I think it's a matriarchal kind of society. So I think the women did most of the governing. So it probably wasn't Osceola, it was probably his mother. And uh, which is smart. I think women probably run a tidier ship and do a lot less stupid things than men. I mean, that's probably how alligator wrestling started. Hey, hold my beer, watch this. <laughs> anyway, um, it's gonna be overcast today, which is a good thing, because it is hot and muggy, but I've got a nice breeze and it's supposed to thunderstorm, but if it stays like this, I'm all for it. Not sure where that thunderstorm is, they promised me. That darn sun's trying to peek out. I'd much rather have a thunderstorm. It is really muggy. 
So Silver Bullet just passed me. She's the other gal that came out with Twig, started at Oasis. And I don't know what time she started this morning, but she's a strong little hiker. She's just, uh, it's that dot right up there. She, uh, I probably won't see her again. She, she can move it. I'll take shade wherever I can find it. So this is the first sun I've had since I've been on the Florida Trail, which is my fifth day. And I have to say, I prefer overcast. <laughs> I do have a nice wind, just right, not enough to turn my umbrella inside out, enough to keep my head cool. I think there's a an official campsite on this uh, levee. Probably another four miles, and when I talked to uh, Silver Bullet when she passed me, she said there's a hand pump there, so that's probably my next water, I'm thinking, unless there's a, another cache. Just stopped to get a bite to eat. Got 25 in right now, but I'm gonna hike until just burn a little more daylight. It's nice and cool now. It's been hot all day, muggy. So I might even hike in the dark a little bit. Just a big flat white road. <laughs> so we're gonna call it a night at 26 miles. It's nice, cool hiking, but I forgot the mosquitoes come out and they're eating me alive so I'll get up early in the morning to deal with them. Maybe it'll be cold enough that they won't be bugging me.